Oh, I think we're enjoying this. I hope you are That's at home. Great. Tell you what, Hazel, Stephen Hendry and myself are certainly enjoying it in the commentary box. That was a fabulous frame of snooker. And not a bad break off shot from Ronnie. He's brought the red up, but uh, the brown has covered that. And uh, well, Ronnie was just one shot away from winning that frame before that unbelievable clearance. And we can show you that while Matthew's thinking about the safety. I thought he played not quite as hard as this. He didn't want to leave one in the middle, but. He made it a bit more difficult, but he thought he was going to get away with that. But the pink was on, the frame was over, but there was just enough of that red sticking out. And, uh, well, it was some clearance. It's amazing, Stephen, when Ronnie breaks off with his left hand, most of the time the two reds finish either side of the black. It's been incredible the number of times they've finished up there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the reason why he breaks left-handed. Um, I don't know. Do you know, Dennis? He just seems he can see the angle better, but uh, every break-off seems to push those two. They always seem to come there, but that last shot, he, he freed the black with his safety. Yeah, I remember a few Can years ago at the Crucible here, off, and uh, in the practice room, Ronnie was playing some shots left-handed, and there was long pots. He said he could see the angle better when he was down playing with his left hand than he could with his right hand. I found it strange, but that's exactly what he told me. And once again, we've got another awkward frame. There's been quite a few frames of the reds that have gone up the other end, and there's one long red available, and if this goes in, he potted one like this in the previous frame and cleared up. Yeah, and it, I think he can be quite confident with this because I can't see what he's going to leave. If he misses, he's just leaving the white where the red is. The only red he could leave was the one he played. Yeah, it was a free shot, as you say, Stephen, but he got reasonably close, so much so that the red stayed there. Now, the white will automatically come back towards the brown if he doesn't put any side on it. So let's see if he puts a little trace aside. He's hit the brown, but that's okay. He's pushed it over the pocket, he's on the yellow and green. So a chance for Ronnie to do something about what happened in that last frame. Because he did go out of the arena, as Steve Davis said, just to maybe just compose himself a little bit. sure if the pink is available into the Five. left corner. I don't think it is. So it's not straightforward yet. There's a little gap here to get on the blue. Well, in fact, you can hold it for the Six. black, which is even better. a test of your temperament after what happened in the previous frame. Let's see if Ronnie can make a, a frame winning break here. Fourteen. Having a quick glance to see if the pink's available into the right middle pocket. 
22. Twenty-nine. Here we are where the cue ball is at the moment. If he only keeps putting the cue ball there, it's giving him a choice of at least <laughs> five or six reds every time. So that's where we'll keep putting the white ball. Oh, what a kick. And if the blue doesn't go up past the red and the pink's not available, that is... An unbelievable bit of bad luck to see that red stay on line, but the white just completely off its normal path. He would have been perfectly on the blue, and that, well, I said it was a test of Ronnie's temperament. That's all you need, Stephen, whenever you're battling your way back into this frame here. It got to be the most annoying thing to happen to you on a snooker table. Um, and it's very rare to get it on that sort of shot, that little stun shot. a very brave shot. 33. A very brave shot and the crowd appreciated that after what happened with the kick. So 34. Absolutely nothing wrong with Ronnie's temperament and focus. Thirty-nine. He's not quite sure from that angle as to whether he would hit the pink maybe just before the red. So change of plan. Forty. He'll try and get on it again. Uh, he's leaving himself options again. Pulled the white another couple 45. inches again, the same place, too far. He doesn't want to play any risky positional shots. He wants to make sure of the frame this time. That's why he's not taking the red next to the pink. It's not 100% what will happen with the cannon. 46. Yeah, people think you're thinking five or six shots ahead. You're, you're leaving yourself options after you play a couple of shots. And Once again, he's tried to get on that red. And this time, has he gone far enough? He's got the other reds into the right corner, 53. and he just can't get the white directly behind the red that's next to the pink. He doesn't want to risk the little cannon, but I think he's okay this time. 54. You can see no problem with hitting the red first there. If it's a split ball, if you hit them both together, it's a foul shot. semi-final is uh, getting better by the frame as Ronnie under screws that shot and now this is similar to the previous frame he's almost over the winning line this red will cut That's still a possible 67 on the table as he looks at the scoreboard he needs another red if the brown passes the green, that is. 48. Well, it did. He only needed the brown and that red along the cushion. He's not going to fluke it, surely. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 62. But he really did hit that harder than I think he needed to do. Okay, he needed to force over behind the red, but he really gives that a good old bang. Quiet down, please. Thank you. But you know, it all started with that red next to the pink. He refused to play the red twice because he wasn't sure the cannon. He played it, he landed a little bit awkward on the black, and then got out of position. Do you know, I think it's virtually the same score as it was in the previous frame. He led by 62 points and lost the frame. Okay, the balls are slightly different this time. It's a more difficult clearance, but we know how Matthew's queuing. 
And even that shot there, I mean, that's a terrific One. positional shot. One safe red, the one near the cushion there. I mean, it's a bit ambitious to try and get, move that from here, but that's what he sort of. He may have tried it, but um, certainly played with lots of right hand side there. Five. Yeah, I think because he had a thin cut and a brown, he decided to put all his eggs in one basket and play that shot. But that's the worst one he's hit today. Matthew Stevens, five. Well, he's knocked in some unbelievable long pots. That was just a lapse in concentration, you'd have to say. Didn't push the cue through in a straight line that time. Difference 57 with 59 remaining, so getting a red up the other end of the table is a pretty good idea. Ronnie will be trying to knock reds onto the cushion, and Matthew Stevens will be trying to keep them in play. But he's a strong favourite for this frame now, is Ronnie. But we've seen what happened in the previous frame. Take one pink, the rest would have to be blacks. From that angle into a middle pocket was just so difficult. He hasn't left it on, it's not cuttable. <coughs> he wants to try and move that right away from the pocket, but uh, you know, there's a shot on, he could push the red off the side cushion down onto the ball cushion, but he'd leave the white near the pocket and a chance for this red up the cushion, a red that he wants to keep tied up there. You see, he's just looking to see if he leaves the white there, what sort of a chance would Matthew have? Well, believe it or not, he's tried to get the snooker on the red he's played with the corner of the middle pocket. If he had a nestled on that cushion, he would have had the snooker. As it is, Matthew can uh, see it, and he can screw back. He can take the pot on and screw back towards the pink and black. But you have to be absolutely precise with this. And the red, is it going to come far enough?